from the heart of Gaddafi's stronghold, the Libyan capital Tripoli. We're among a small group of journalists who've been invited in as the Gaddafi regime tries to put its stamp now on the unfolding story here. And as we try to sort fact from fiction, sometimes fact is so much stranger. Who could possibly invent the rants and the ravings of a leader like Colonel Gaddafi? The defecting Libyan Air Force pilots, the Libyan diplomats bursting into tears at the United Nations as they take a stand against their leader of 41 years. Now, the tough new sanctions and Gaddafi's increasing isolation are based on allegations that he has ordered airstrikes, bombing of civilian protesters. We have seen no evidence of that yet, and the Gaddafis strongly deny it. But journalists have been to hospitals and have seen gunshot victims. We've met people who are angry that protests have been met by live fire. There are special army brigades and tanks ringing the entrances to this capital. But also confirmation that a town just 30 kilometers away is under opposition control. But there is a sense that Gaddafi can hold out here, at least in the short term, as we found out in our journey that began 24 hours ago. We're on one of the few commercial flights from London into Tripoli, the capital of Libya. It's Gaddafi's last major stronghold, his holdout. We don't know what we're going to find. We've been asked by the government to come and see their side of the story. They say all is calm. We'll see when we get there. Our plane was mostly empty, and when we landed, so was a grand airport VIP lounge. We found a big portrait of Gaddafi still adorning the wall, proof that for now, the colonel still controls his capital. But just outside the lounge, a desperate scene, as migrant workers from all over this region seek refuge and safe passage home. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people trying to get out, just hanging out here. They don't have tickets, most of them and there's garbage and clothes strewn all over the place. It seems they've just come here because they're so unsure about what's happening in the city itself. How many days you been here? I don't know, maybe, maybe four days, maybe five days. With no money, no airline tickets, and little hope of making it onto a flight, these people have no idea how much longer they'll have to camp outside as mounds of garbage pile up beside them. We've left that sea of humanity behind at the airport. There were some soldiers guarding the entrance to the airport, but now we're driving into Tripoli itself. And so far, there's no sign of any violence, of any conflict on this road. All right. After the eerie calm of the streets, a colorful neon welcome at the designated journalist hotel. A surreal scene since we'd been told the city was now ringed with tanks and pro Qaddafi forces. Earlier Saturday, reports that 500 miles to the east, cities along the Mediterranean coast had largely fallen. Tens of thousands of anti-government demonstrators celebrated there in Libya's second largest city, Benghazi. I've never been as happy as today in my whole life. And they were not alone. All along the coast, they were firing guns into the air, taking control of a radio station, even mocking and impersonating their leader of more than four decades. All this as after a week of protests and violent reprisals, President Obama issued a statement saying that Gaddafi needs to do what is right for his country by leaving now. I sat down for exclusive interviews with Gaddafi's sons. First, I spoke to Saif al-Islam, who is also one of his chief advisors. Thank you for joining us. The President of the United States, President Obama, has called on your father to step down. What do you think about that? First of all, it's not an American business. That's number one. Uh, second, uh, uh, do you think this is a solution? Of course not. He says if a person can only keep control by using force, then legitimacy is gone. Right. But what happened? We didn't use force. Second, we still have people around us. So we are in Tripoli. In Tripoli, we ha you have here half of the population of Libya. The half. Like more than 2.5 million, 2 million people living in this city. Do you think because of 10,000 or 5,000 people, 
they, they have a list even even if they have a list of demands or against my father or whatsoever it means that the whole libyan population is against mr Gaddafi. you said that you're not using violence but there are many reports of helicopter gunships of people being killed and also air force pilots defecting, jettisoning their planes rather than carry out orders to bomb, bomb citizens. Show me a single attack, show me a single bomb, show me a single casualty. The Libyan Air Force destroyed just the ammunition sites. What do you make of your diplomats in New York, for instance, in Washington, who are resigning I tell you. because they're I saying they can't I abide this policy? Yeah, I talked to them. Why do you think so many people are deserting your father? He thought, he thought, and many of them, that the, the system is going to collapse. So the best thing is to jump from the ship. The ship is sinking, they think, so it's better to, to jump. Will there be a new regime? If you are strong, they love you. If not, they say goodbye. And it's good, we get rid of them. Hypocrites. Do you think they'll get rid of you? No. They, they, they are the losers. They have no future. They, they, they want to join the youth revolution. What's the plan? What is your plan? Are you staying? Are you going? What's your father's plan? Is he staying? Is he going? Listen, nobody is leaving this country. We live here, we die here. This is our country. The Libyans are our people. And for, my, for myself, I, I believe that I am doing the right thing. Before all this happened, you were known, certainly in the West, for being a reformer, speaking the language of reform for Libya. But it didn't happen. Why did it take this kind of crisis for you to start talking about reform again? Wouldn't it have been better to have implemented what you're talking about now, yeah, yeah, way was, before? Of course, it was a big mistake. So why not? It was a big mistake, not to, to move fast. I was, you know, I was like, uh, what did I say, shouting every day about this, I was, you know, I was, uh, I was crazy about uh, uh, going fast and implementing the reforms in the right time. I was, you know, I worked very hard to go, uh, you know, to implement many ideas, but things went wrong. So now we are in a difficult situation. And the people who were responsible for that, stopping me from going forward, they are the same people who, who I, I see them every day on the TV saying, bye-bye, we are going with the, with the next group. The same faces, the same people. Are you afraid at all? Afraid of what? The point that you are hearing rumors, false reports, please take your camera tomorrow morning, even this night, go, uh, go to uh, every city in Libya. Everything is calm, everything is peaceful. The point there is a big, big gap between reality and the media reports. Saif, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. You say there's a big, big gap between reality and media reports. Some might say there's a big, big gap between what you're thinking and saying to me and the reality around the rest of Libya. Why the, the whole South is calm, the West is calm, the Middle is calm, even part of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the East. What do you make of the international community's reaction? There are calls to have heavy sanctions, to freeze your assets, your father's assets, family assets? First of all, we, we, we don't have money outside. We are a very modest family, and everybody knows that. And we were laughing when they said we have money in Europe or in Switzerland or something. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a joke. A few hours later, we went to talk to Gaddafi's son, Saadi, who's lived many years outside this country, used to play football for an Italian team. We reached him just as news emerged of fresh UN sanctions against his family. Overnight, Libya time, the United Nations slapped sanctions on this country and a travel ban. How is that going to affect you? Uh, only about the, only the, 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 the travel issue. This has bothered me so much because uh, I spent most of my life uh, in traveling, you know. So what's in your immediate plans if you can't travel? I'm going to hire a lawyer. I have some hobbies after I, um, I quit football. I have some hobbies, like uh, I do some hunting, I go to safari. So uh, maybe there's no safari, so uh, I got to go to safari. I got to hire a lawyer. <laughs> you got to get out of Libya. I mean, I have to be, I, I would like to live normal. 
The people here say they would like to live normally. They want normal freedoms. They want a normal life. And they haven't had it. No, they have, they have, they have, they have. You think so? Yeah, but the, the people, every, everybody wants more. There is no limit. You give this, then you get ask for that. You know. What do you think is happening to your region? Earthquake. An earthquake? An earthquake. It's a fever. It's, a, it's going to spread everywhere. None, no one can, will stop it. This is my, person, this is my personal opinion. And uh, the chaos will, uh, will be everywhere. You think it'll be chaos or you think it'll be a fever of freedom and democracy? No, 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 no. They think it's uh, about freedom. Everybody loves freedom. I love freedom. You love freedom. But uh, it's mo much powerful, this earthquake. No one can control it. Will your father leave? I think it's if, uh, if he, uh, if, let's say if he has to leave today. If he, live, if he lives today, today, one, just one hour later, local war, civil war in Libya. You've traveled a lot. You've lived in other countries. When you see the kind of life, the kind of freedoms, the kind of democracy that other people have, did it make you think that people here should have it? How did you feel about of coming course, back here and people is, didn't have it? This is the main thing. This is the main issue for me. Bothering. This, this thing is bothering me every day. Is it hard being Gaddafi's son? I have to deal with it. I would like to be myself. I would like to be just Sadie.